All right, we're going to tackle a relative motion problem here. These are the types of problems where you have some sort of motion relative to the surrounding. So I'm going to say that I have a boat that's moving in some water. We can talk about the boat's motion relative to the water right next to it. But at the same time, there is a current. So the body of water itself is actually moving. And so I gave us the vector that is associated with that. And you may recall that I use the S vector. Remember, the arrow just means vector. I'm saying that the surroundings are moving at 6.4 kilometers per hour at a global angle of this 255 degrees. I also have the M sub S vector that is sitting over here, which is the motion of the boat relative to the surroundings, so M sub S. And when you add S plus M together, you will get the actual motion, which is the resultant. And so here is some information that is relative to the resultant of our particular vectors. And so again, if I were to kind of draw this out, I'm going to have some motion of the boat heading up in this direction that I'm kind of showing here. Then I'm going to have some sort of S vector. This is the MS vector is going to be equal to the resultant, which is going to be moving like that. So I'm just adding my vectors head to tail. Now, if you go through and read this problem, you notice that there's a little bit of information that I still need to kind of figure out. Recall that you cannot add numbers together unless they have the same units. That applies to vectors as well. So if I'm going to talk about uh, say this velocity vector up here in units of kilometers per hour, then everything that I am looking at as far as my vectors are concerned need to be in kilometers per hour. If you read the problem statement, it says that you are traveling a distance of 18.6 kilometers and that you have two hours in order to make that trip. So that's simple enough. I just need to go ahead and divide the distance traveled by the time to find that velocity vector. So this guy, instead of 18.6, what I'm going to use is half of that, 9.3. That's km per hour. So that is actually the r vector. And somewhere off to the side here, I'm going to write down the general equation that we're going to be referencing here, which is the ms vector plus the s vector is going to be equal to the r vector. Now, unfortunately, our vectors are not making nice right angles. That is not a right angle inside of this triangle I've drawn. And so I need to break this thing down into components. Ultimately, what it's going to look like, and I'm going to need a, a lot of board space probably to do this, but we are going to treat the y dimension separate from the x dimension. And so I'm going to actually have in the y, what is the ms comma y direction plus the s sub y direction is going to be equal to the resultant in the y direction. Now, I actually know some information about this, and then I know some information about this, and this is the guy that I'm trying to find right now. And I will have a very similar approach with the x direction, where everything is going to look identical except in the x. So first what I have to do is I need to find the components of this vector and this vector. And then we will come back to this idea where I will be able to look at this. Okay, to begin with, the s vector. So I've got this thing moving down here, and I need to break that up into components. If that is a third quadrant down into the left, then my component vectors must be down and also to the left. And this is a right triangle. I'm breaking it up into nice components here. I know that it was 255 degrees starting from the east direction. So going around, there's 180. Then I'm going to go down, and this is 255. I would actually have to travel an additional 15 degrees in order to make it all the way over to that 270. And so I can make my triangle, and this is what it looks like. And I also know that this is 6.4. I'm going to leave units off of all these numbers now that I know I have unit agreement. Okay, for the adjacent side, this is the y component over here. I'm going to be able to use the information 
that the cosine <coughs> of 15 degrees is equal to the adjacent side is y divided by 6.4 that is the hypotenuse multiply this 6.4 over I find that y is actually equal to the value of 6.18 uh, however I have a downward pointing vector over here this was a downward pointing vector I'm gonna call down the negative direction and so I'm gonna tag that with a negative sign so that I can keep that straight and I'm actually gonna start a table over here where I'm gonna keep track of what my components are so this is for the s vector in the y direction its component is negative 6.18 now I come back over here and I wanna identify that x vector that I have the x component it is going to look identical except it is the sine function that is useful to me so again the 6.4 would get multiplied over that hypotenuse it's going to be 6.4 times sine of 15 degrees and when I write this out I get that x is equal to 1.66 and that is a rounded number again though it is pointing to the left and so I want to make that a negative sign so the s vector in the x is going to be a negative 1.66 now I need to actually find the resultant vector so switch over to some blue here the resultant vector is going to have its own y component and x component and we will find that this vector is a second quadrant vector it is going to have its own components if the second quadrant vector is to the left and up then the components are to the left and up and this is a 90 degree angle you should identify here that that will be a positive y component however this will be a negative x component okay so that's going to be a negative number there uh, whereas this will be a positive I have the angle associated with this was given up here if you look it's 26 degrees and I also know that this is a 9.3 for its magnitude the mathematics looks very similar for the y it is going to be a 9.3 for the hypotenuse times sine of 26 degrees because the y is the opposite side over here and then over here it's going to be x is equal to 9.3 but this time the cosine function because it is the adjacent side I'm just going to go ahead and fill these numbers straight into the little table over here in the y direction I have a positive 4.08 and in the x direction for the resultant it is a negative recall we said that the leftward pointing component was going to be a negative 8 point uh, three six now we come back to the information that I had before where I said that we were going to use this equation except we are going to do it for one dimension at a time so in the Y let's go ahead and say that there is this M s comma Y plus the s comma Y is equal to the resultant in the Y and so if I fill in the numbers that I have now I have this variable s comma y plus however it is a minus so plus a minus here 6.18 is equal to and then now I'm gonna grab the y resultant 4.08 and if I do my arithmetic I will find that the y component of that vector is equal to 10.26 now I will do the same thing for the x dimension I have ms comma x plus sx is equal to rx plug in the numbers that I have this thing that I'm trying to solve for here plus another minus for this guy 1.66 is equal to negative 8.36 and I find that m s comma x is equal to 6.7 okay so I hang on to these numbers for a moment oops and I forgot my minus sign down here on the 6.7 that's important uh, so notice that this component 
of the vector I'm trying to find is a leftward pointing and it is actually a minus 6.7. All right, now to redraw the vector I'm solving for. So the final vector that I'm solving for looks something like this. There's that, and then I had two components. This was the ms and the x, this was the ms and the y, and the values that I got that I had just erased here, but I still have them, 10.26 pointing upwards, and then I had a negative, so that's how I knew that the vector needed to point to the left here, of a 6.7. Okay, This is an angle that I'm going to be very interested in. I'm always interested in the angles that are at the tails of my vectors here, so this being the tail over here. So I'm going to be focused in on that angle as opposed to this one up here. That one is not nearly as useful for me. I can do Pythagorean theorem, so I have 10.26 squared plus 6.7 squared is going to be equal to this ms value. And so it's ms squared that that is equal to. And when I do that, I get that that is 12.25. Okay, that is part of my final answer. The Last thing that I need to do though is I need to find this value for theta that's down here. I will go ahead and use the tangent function for that. And so I can say that tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So 10.26 divided by 6.7. I will do the inverse tangent of both sides so that I can get rid of the tan in front of my theta there. So tan theta is equal to the inverse tangent because I have to do that operation to both sides 10.26 divided by 6.7 remember that is the only way to get rid of the tan so now I am left with theta is equal to the inverse tan of this number I don't really know why I'm writing it again here Theta is equal to 56.9 degrees. Okay, so that's 56.9 degrees, but that is not a sufficient way for me to talk about the angle of that because uh, people wouldn't necessarily know how I drew my triangle. So we're going to convert that to the global angle which I always measure from east. And so I'm interested in this angle that's there, measuring from east and always going counterclockwise. I would go all the way over here to 180 and then I'm actually backtracking 56.9 degrees. And so if I do 180 minus 56.9 degrees, I find that the global angle is equal to 123, 123.1 degrees. So my very final answer what is the total thing? I'm going to say it is 12.25 km per hour. That's the magnitude. And my vector is at a global angle of 123.1 degrees. So there's the full thing. So lots of trigonometry to solve a problem like this, but conceptually, hopefully, it wasn't very complicated. And if you think you understand it, let your computer know.